Council President, I'd like to call the regular meeting of the Elmwood Park Mayor and Council to order for August 20th, 2015 at 8.02 p.m. On roll call, Council Members Catamagna. Present. Coletti. Here. Martino. Here. Pettigano. Here. Boncino. Here. Council President Dombrowski. Here. And Mayor Mola is out of the country on vacation. Can everyone please rise for our prayer and flag salute? <clears throat> oh God, our Father, we ask you to bless our meeting, which we entrust with your fatherly care and protection. Please remove all selfishness and prejudice from our, heart, from our hearts and implement therein a keen sense of justice and a greater love for you and our neighbor. Guide us in your deliverance so that other decisions will always be, please you and bring your peace and happiness to our community. Amen. Amen. Pledge allegiance, Pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States, States of America and to, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Whereas Chapter 231 of the Public Laws of the State of New Jersey requires at the commencement of every meeting a statement of compliance be read by the presiding officer. Now, therefore, be advised that the meeting requirements for this meeting have been met by publishing an annual meeting notice in the record of Hackensack and the Herald News of Woodland Park and by posting such notices in the office of the borough clerk as well as in the public places within the municipal building and by notifying interested citizens. Said notices have been posted on January 1, 2014. Excuse me, January 1st, 2015. Ladies and gentlemen, this meeting is being videotaped and will be on Cablevision Channel 77 on Tuesdays at 12 p.m., Thursdays at 4 p.m., and on Fridays at 10 a.m. It is also on Channel 41 of Fios at the same times, Tuesday, 12 p.m., Thursday, 4 p.m., and Friday at 10 a.m. The video will also be available on our borough website at www.elmaparknj.us. Council President, this evening we have for the approval of minutes, January 8th, 2015 work session, April 16th, 2015 regular meeting, April 16th, 2015 executive session, May 7th, 2015 regular meeting, May 21st, 2015 regular meeting, May June 4th, 2015 regular meeting, June 11th, 2015 work session, June 18th, 2015 regular meeting, August 16th, 2015 regular meeting, August 6, 2015 work session, which was presented to the council today, and August 6, 2015 executive session. It's been a busy summer. <laughs> May I have a motion, please, to accept them? So move. Mr. Caramagna. Second. Second. Councilman uh, Pettigan. Thank Councilman you. Dombrowski, as we call the roll, if there's any abstentions, just please note the date. Okay. Okay. On roll call, council members Caramagna. Yes. Coletti. Yes. Martino. May 21st and July 16th. Pettigano? May 21st. And yes for the rest? Yes. Boncino? Yes. yes, with the exception of June 11th. Council President Dombrowski? Yes, with the exception of August 6th, work and executive. Motion carries. Council President, this evening under ordinances, we have resolution 279-15, introduce ordinance 15-20 on first reading. Be it resolved that an ordinance entitled a bond ordinance to appropriate an additional sum of $128,000 for the improvements of Boulevard sections 8, 9, and 10 in, by, and for the Borough of Elmwood Park in the County of Bergen, State of New Jersey, to make a down payment to authorize the issuance of bonds to finance such an additional appropriation to provide for the issuance of ant bond anticipation notes in anticipation of the issuance of such bonds, be passed and adopted on first reading, and be it resolved that a final hearing on said ordinance will be heard in the Municipal Building on Thursday, September 17, 2015, at 8 p.m., or as soon thereafter, as the same can be heard, at which time and place all persons interested in said ordinance can be heard. Be it further resolved that the Borough Clerk be, and is hereby authorized to advertise any legal newspaper, a notice of introduction, and final hearing as required by law. May I have a motion, please? So, so move. move. Councilman Martino, seconded by Councilman Catamagna. Council President, if I may, um, as was reported at our last work session by our borough engineer, um, we are combining uh, parts of sections 8 and 9 with section 10, um, and this is the additional funding that we will need to bridge that gap, so to speak. Thank you. On roll call, Council Members Caramagna? Yes. Coletti? Yes. Martino? Yes. Pettigano? Yes. Boncino? Yes. Dombrowski? Yes. Motion carries. Council President, this evening under ordinances on second reading, we have resolution 280-15, introduce ordinance 15-19 on second reading. 
Whereas public notice has been given by the borough clerk that an ordinance entitled an ordinance to amend Article 22-1.6 of the Code of the Borough of Elmwood Park entitled Curb, Sidewalk, and Driveway Opening Requirements. And whereas said ordinance was introduced and passed at a meeting held on Thursday, July 16th at 2015, and that further consideration of this ordinance would be taken up at this meeting. And whereas all persons interested in said ordinance were given the opportunity to be heard concerning same. Now therefore be resolved that the Mayor and Council of the Borough of Elmwood Park that an ordinance entitled an ordinance to amend Article 22-1.6 of the Code of the Borough of Elmwood Park entitled Curb, Sidewalk, and Driveway Opening Requirements pass on final reading. We have to open to the public? We do. We need a motion. I have a motion to open to the public. So move. Second. Uh, Mr. Catamagna and seconded by Mr. Boncino. All in favor? All in favor? Yep. Aye. Aye. Okay. Anybody from the public would like to speak on Ordinance 280-15? And Council President, if I may, this is an ordinance extending our moratorium from a two-year moratorium on road openings to a five-year moratorium. For instance, if PSE&G was to come in and do utility work as they're doing as part of their Energy Strong program, um, any roads that the borough resurfaced within the last five years would need to be restored curb to curb. The current ordinance, if it was within two years, Correct. this gives us another three years. It so protects us better. Right. Is anybody in this? Please come up and give your name. Rich Trawinski, 42 Walmart Street. I got a question on the ordinance. Uh, it's not five years applies to anybody. Suppose, suppose somebody builds a house and has to run a sore line down the street. Can't build it for five years? Uh, uh, so there's a moratorium on the road for five years if you open it. Mm -hmm. Naturally, if you build a house, say there's a, like a lot, a spotlight on a house, on a, on a block. Builder goes in, or even a homeowner goes in, knocks his house down, he wants to run a new store of water. He's got to wait five years holding that road? No. Yeah. This is just for uh, just utilities. For, just, you, for you, utilities. just for utilities. Okay, right. so that's that. Yeah. For public utilities. They like, would affect the utility. Yeah, correct. Anybody else in the audience like to speak on behalf of this ordinance? Motion. If not, I'll take a motion to close the public so uh, portion. So moved. Mr. Martino. Second. Mr. Catamagna. Call the roll. Uh, we'll need a motion to adopt. Uh, a motion to adopt. I apologize. That's okay. So moved. Mr. Martino. Second. Second, Mr. Pettigano. Call on, roll. On roll call, Council Members Catamagna. Yes. Coletti. Yes. Martino. Yes. Pettigano. Yes. Poncino. Yes. Dombrowski. Yes. Motion carries. Council President, this evening under the consent agenda, we have resolution 281-15, payment of bills, resolution 282-15, payment of escrow, resolution 283-15, confirmation of payroll, resolution 284-15, award bid for English Avenue Park improvements to TNS Builders, LLC, resolution 285-15, appoint borough floodplain manager Richard Bowen, resolution 286-15, appoint board of health member Edith Spinelli, and I will note that the mayor waived his right uh, to make an appointment on that particular uh, position. Resolution 287-15, appoint crossing guards for the 2015-2016 school year. Resolution 288-15, resolution authorizing the use of the all-purpose room and or council chambers to the New North Jersey Community Center for the Deaf, Incorporated. Resolution 289-15, authorize refunds for the recreation department programs. Resolution 290-15, authorize the release of road opening performance bonds. Resolution 291-15, proclamation supporting the Drive Sober or Get Pulled Over 2015 statewide crackdown. Resolution 292-15, award proposal for all purpose room improvements to Vinny Builders, LLC. Resolution 293-15, authorize shared services agreement with the Passaic Valley Water Commission. Resolution 294-15, authorize the before and after school program <coughs> stipend for Donna Puglisi. Resolution 295-15, appoint before and after school program employees within the Recreation Department. Resolu resolution 296-15, a resolution increasing the bid threshold as per NJSA 40A colon 11-3. Resolution 297-15, authorization of property maintenance by the Department of Public Works. These are properties in town that are under foreclosure. Resolution 298-15, resolution to refund for overpayment it's due to tax appeal located at 133 Broadway. Resolution 299-15, resolution to redeem third party tax lien, 59 Parkview Avenue. Resolution 300-15, resolution awarding contract 
to PL Custom to remount the ambulance chassis for the Volunteer <coughs> Ambulance Corps. Resolution 301-15, appointment of Class 1 Special Police Officers in the Police Department. Resolution 302-15, retire liquor license 0211-31031-001, Defender Company 3, Volunteer Fire Department Incorporated. Resolution 303-15, bid award 2015 road program to Smithson the Asphalt Construction Company. Resolution 304-15, renew liquor licenses for the 2015-2016 license term. Resolution 305-15, authorize shared services agreement, Jeffrey R. Cernin and Associates, LLC. This is the expert for our COA declaratory judgment filing. Resolution 306-15, authorize shared services agreement for the before and after school program between the borough and the, Woodland, uh, the Elmwood Park <coughs> Board of Education. Resolution 307-15, approve the rescheduling of the block party originally scheduled for Lincoln Avenue. And Resolution 308-15, purchase replacement 2015 police interceptor SUV in the police department. We have a motion to accept the consent agenda. So, Mr. Martino. Second. Mr. Catamania, any discussion? I would like to recuse myself from, uh, what is that, uh, R-292-15. I had business relations, and I just would like to avoid anything. Uh, Council President, if I may make a recommendation uh, that Councilman Martino and Councilman Catamania um, amend their motion to approve the consent agenda and include the removal of Resolution 292-15 as we'll vote it on as a separate matter. Gentlemen, will you? So moved. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, all in favor? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So we'll take a roll call on the consent agenda absent Resolution 292-15. Council Members Catamania? Yes. Coletti? Yes. Martino? Yes. Pedigano? Yes. Fonsino? Yes. Dombrowski? Yes. Resolution R-292-15, award proposal for all purpose room improvements to Vinnie Builders, LLC. Whereas there is a desire to make improvements to the all purpose room in the municipal building of the borough of Elmwood Park, and whereas the borough received three proposals for these improvements, and whereas the decision was made to move forward with accepting the proposal from Vinnie Builders, LLC, now, therefore, be it resolved by the Mayor and Council of the Borough of Elmwood Park that the proposal submitted by Vinnie Builders, LLC, in the amount not to exceed $25,600 is hereby awarded. Can I have a motion to accept R-292-15? So move. Mr. Catamania? Second. Mr. Martino? All in favor? Aye. Call the roll. On roll, call to approve Resolution 292-15. Council Members Catamania? Yes. Martino? Yes. Coletti? Yes. Pedigano? Recuse. Abstain. Vancino? Yes. Dombrowski? Yes. Motion carries. And then, Council President, we have a resolution that was discussed earlier tonight in the 7 o'clock special work session um, relative to waiving the location um, restriction for a place to place liquor license transfer. Um, do we have a motion to add this? Um, to the agenda tonight uh, in order for action to be taken. Can I have a motion to add to the agenda? So move. Second. Mr. Catamania, Mr. Pedigano, <clears throat> any discussion? If I may, Council Sir? President, <clears throat> just uh, for the public's edification, uh, we have a situation here where we have two liquor stores within a close proximity to each other and a third wanting to move in. Our ordinance states that there should not be uh, these establishments closer than 500 feet from each other. However, in the past, as I look at this map, it seems to have been waived or just never addressed. So we're voting tonight on waiving that 500 foot restriction to uh, each other and churches and um, um, schools, I would assume. Uh, I have a problem with that because we have two established businesses, as though the third is established also that wants to move into this radius uh, that I feel will be affected by 
the, the competition in plain English. I, and I know all the laws of capitalism. Uh, believe me, I, I, I know them very well. Uh, also, there's laws of common sense. Uh, case in point, when you look at these uh, shopping centers, the landlords know better than to put two liquor stores in the same shopping center. And they could be massive. They could be a mile apart or a half a mile. Uh, two coffee shops. There's restrictions uh, that uh, the uh, private sector, uh, they follow. And uh, I think that applies here, uh, even though we're not supposed to look at it in that respect. But this, this uh, ordinance was established for a reason. And maybe today in this, uh, this world of uh, how fast media coverage uh, gets from one point to another, and it, uh, it doesn't have that much effect, uh, but I think that, you know, some of these old traits we have to maintain. And tonight in the work meeting, we've had uh, representation from the applicant, but the, uh, the two who might be considering objecting to our decision here tonight uh, weren't here. And I wish that my colleagues all could have heard uh, th uh, them and their side as we did the, the applicant in the public portion of it. And I, I think your, uh, your feelings would have been a little different. So uh, I don't think what we're doing here tonight is very smart, very right. Under pressure, we're creating a waiver because a business is forced to move, even though it is a business in Elmwood Park, from one, their location because their rent is being quadrupled or whatever. Uh, what I don't understand about that scenario is if the, the landlord doesn't own the liquor license, uh, why is he raising the rent on this, this client so much? Uh, he's never going to get it from any other type of business, you would think. But that, that's neither here nor there. But uh, I, I really don't like uh, the idea of <clears throat> encroaching on two smaller businesses. And there was some talk in, from the public about well, the people are just going to go to their, these establishments. Uh, who's ever going to A is going to go to A. Who's ever going to B is going to go to B. Who's ever going to C is going to go to C. Uh, but I beg to differ a little on that, now that I had the chance to think about it, because uh, if you have somebody who has a larger square footage, he can, he's buying in volume on certain products cheaper, and he can advertise such, that working trade that these local smaller businesses might be getting, it's, it's, it's going to hurt them. Uh, I don't think it's, uh, it's right. Uh, we, we, the council has, we should have taken this ordinance and, and dwelled upon it, got, got a little more uh, representation from the state. Uh, I know our, our administrator did give us some stats from the county, uh, which we, we appreciate. But before I make a decision like that that could potentially hurt the livelihood of a business, I would like to have all the data uh, available from the state point of view. And not that he uh, didn't offer it, it's just that I'm requesting that now. Uh, but I have a hunch it's going to go for naught. Uh, thank you, uh, Council President. Okay. Um, so, could I, could I yes, sir, certainly. So tonight um, we have an applicant who applied for a waiver. Uh, as my colleague mentioned, we have a 500 foot distance requirement between uh, liquor licenses and an applicant uh, applied for a waiver and the governing body has the latitude to consider that waiver um, in the case of hardship. Um, in fact, we listened to both sides of the argument at our last work meeting where uh, the other business was in attendance uh, and spoke out uh, their concerns about another establishment moving in. But in my mind, the overriding uh, issue was the hardship that was placed on the applicant. And he demonstrated, at least for me, uh, one, that his rent was being increased over 50%. And two, that if he moved his location, um, he would realize maybe a cost of about half uh, on a per square foot basis if he moved to the new location. So not entertaining the waiver would just allow uh, a business to die on the vine, if you will. So um, you could be concerned about having two dis, uh, businesses in proximity, but if we, we didn't act, um, we would just be saying, you know, go out of business to the applicant. So I think he demonstrated enough of a hardship, at least in my mind, uh, that we're able to grant this waiver. 
uh, relative to our 500 foot ordinance and what exists and why it wasn't followed in town, we as a governing body have to do a deep dive into that, figure out what other communities are doing, figure out why over the last 50 years we haven't followed what we wrote down in the books, and figure out what we want to do going forward. But I don't think that analysis uh, or that paralysis by analysis uh, needs to impact this business owner. So um, I'm going to support the waiver. Thank you, Councilman. I, I, if I, if I, sure. Yeah, just certainly. Uh, not that I'm looking to just counter what you said, uh, uh, Mr. Vancino, but the uh, hardship also falls on the two existing businesses by this third business being put into their radius, if you will. So it, there is hardship on both sides here. I, I would just like to add that, you know, I'm in support of the waiver because of the free enterprise. I, I'd also like to state that, you know, why do we have an ordinance on the books just for liquor licenses? Why is there not a same type of ordinance for all the nail salons that are next door to each other? If you take a look at Market Street, there's three delis well, within what, 300 feet of each other. Actually, two are in the same, are, are, are within the same uh, block of stores. Um, I don't see why it's, it's, I feel it's unfair to pick on just liquor stores. Again, it's about free enterprise. The delis have been in existence um, for quite a long time. The nail salons have been in existence for quite a long time. I think that there should, I don't think that uh, the businesses will hurt. I think that, I think it'll help increase the economy in that area. It might bring more people and might oper and might actually bring more people to the new, bit to the old businesses because they now see that there's a, a new store in the location and they say, oh wow, there's a liquor store across the street. Let me go, let me go take a look at it. Uh, that's how I feel, so I'm, I'm personally supporting it. Uh, anybody else like? If I may, sir? Uh, you brought up a point about why should you have distance between liquor stores. I, I've been known to have a drink or two, but the number one drug in this country is alcohol. Mm -hmm. So that's why you have laws like this put in place. Well, the, the, let's, let's make clear what the law is. The state statute law, state statute, I'm not talking about our ordinance, but the state statute is, is 200 feet from a house of worship or a, uh, a school, okay? The state statute also says that a liquor store can open up next door to a liquor store. We only have 23 liquor, li 20, we have 23 liquor licenses in a 2.8 square mile uh, town. And in, of those 23, you can only put them in locations, basically, and we kind of figured it out, five streets. Market possibly to uh, River Road, Boulevard, Route 46, and Route 4. Where do you fit 23? You gotta fit them somewhere. Yeah. But you don't have to adopt uh, to the uh, state uh, uh, ordinance. You, that's why towns have their, their own freedom to design laws with the, that work within their community. But we haven't because we've allowed 11 liquor licenses to well, overlap that's, each other. That's, not, that's another story. So that's, I, 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 as a councilman, have to allow for free enterprise. I mean, it's, it, I'm, not, I, I'm not looking to hurt any individual business. I don't think any one of us up here are looking to hurt any individual business. But we also have heard the argument from the current applicant that it will hurt his business if we don't do this. And since the precedence has been already set that 11 of them have been overlapping, I think that I, that's why I'm in favor of approving the, the so waiver. So two, two wrongs make a right here again. Uh, that part I don't understand of, of what you're saying. Uh, we're putting another business with, within 200 feet and looking at it from a town planning aspect, that doesn't seem smart. We're uh, 2.8 square miles, sir. Where do, what, where and, do you you just, and you just put three liquor stores within so basically, we have to let go of how many liquor licenses so that it falls within... It's not our business to let go of them. They, and it's also not our business to tell somebody that they can't make money. No, he's in establishment now. He's being moved out. <clears throat> now what we're doing is we're taking his problem and bringing it to the two other stores right. that are, are, are barely surviving. We're trying to survive. The problem starts with the applicant being evicted from his location. The, according to our current ordinance, which is 500 feet from within another liquor license. As I said, we have 11 liquor licenses that already overlap. The 
two applicants in which Councilman Coletti is talking about actually overlap each other. They're within 500 feet of each other. And one is within 500 feet of a house of worship. So now, do we know if there was waivers or not? We, we're really speaking in the air here. This is why I said this, this should have been uh, tabled and we should have got more information. On these that overlap, were, were there waivers applied? Do we know that, Keith? I can't confirm that because oh, okay. there have been, <clears throat> there have been, um, there's a retention we, schedule for liquor license files. We rushed that, precipitously to pass this tonight and it's wrong. It's wrong. We don't have all the information we need, and we're just passing it. Council President, if I may, uh, yes. to answer Councilman Coletti's question, there is a five-year records retention schedule for liquor license files. So after those five years are up, those files can be requested through my office by the state of New Jersey to destroy those records. Um, we have, on a rolling schedule every year, that sixth year worth of records we request to eliminate those records and destroy them. So we would not even be able to go back to research the waiver process. I can tell you that there have not been any waivers um, requested and therefore granted since January 1st, 2007, because that's how long I've been okay. here and this is the first request so, we've so had. So Keith, is it time. safe to say that these 11 that overlap were subject to waivers? I, I can't speak to that. I mean, it happened under so the how can it we happened even, under the previous clerk, how can we and there are no records for me to go back to to determine whether or not that was the case. Okay, so as a council, how can we make an educated decision without knowing if they were waived? What, typically, what we did tonight. Well, with all due respect, if they were wa waivers, that would be the best case scenario. It's a, a precedent. Why Correct. would we need it? the worst case is that we weren't following our ordinance? But we don't know. That's the problem. But it doesn't matter. If there was a, a waiver, that's what we're doing tonight. We're giving the business a waiver. That's my, oh, that's my opinion. I, don't, I, I just don't follow the logic. Keith, can we have a motion to, okay, the, uh, can we have a motion to accept? Well, no, hold, Council President, if I may. The, uh, the motion that is on the floor at this time, motion by Councilman Catamania, seconded by Councilman Pettigano, is to add this resolution to the agenda. So I think we need to take a roll call on that, then I'll read the resolution into the record, and we can take a motion to adopt. Okay. Uh, on roll call to add it to the agenda, Council Members Catamania? Yes. Coletti? No. Martino? Yes. Pettigano? Yes. Boncino? Yes. Dombrowski? Yes. Okay, motion carries. Resolution R309-15, resolution waiving the location restriction for a liquor license. Whereas a request has been made to do a place-to-place -place liquor license transfer for Somras Incorporated, and whereas upon publication of the requested transfer, the municipal clerk's office received two objections to the transfer based on Municipal Code 6-5.2, which states no license shall be transferred to any premises which are within 500 feet of any other liquor licensed premises. And whereas, according to the Municipal Code 6-5.5, the distance requirement from a licensed premises contained in subsection 6-5.2 may be waived by the Borough Council upon application by any license holding any licensee holding a liquor license for a place-to-place -place transfer. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Borough Council that the Municipal Code 6-5.5 is hereby invoked to allow the place-to-place -place transfer for licensee Somras Incorporated. Council President will need a motion to adopt. May I have a motion to adopt the resolution? So moved. Mr. Second. Martino? Second. Mr. Uh, Pettigan. Council President, if somebody wants to speak, is it? Uh, it it's not public. Comments? No, it's not. It's later on. <laughs> they can speak in the public session. It's no, not an order. It's a resolution. No. The, under, if, I, if I may, Council President, there is a provision in the ordinance as it sits today that allows for the Council by resolution um, to waive the requirement uh, and the 500 distance limitation. A uh, motion to adopt? We have a motion from Councilman Martino and a and second, second from, from Councilman Mr. Pettigano. Pettigano. Roll, call the roll, please. On roll call, Council Members Catamagna? Yes. Coletti? No. Martino? Yes. Pettigano? Yes. Boncino? Yes. Dombrowski? Yes. Motion carries. Uh, Council President, under departmental reports this evening, we have the building department reports from January through June 2015, the municipal court report for June, the library board minutes for June 15th, the Recreation Department report for July and the Finance Department report for July. May I have a motion to accept the file? 
So move. Mr. Catamania, second. Second. Mr. Pettigano. All in favor? Aye. 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 And we also have two applications listed, American Legion Post 147 bingo application and American Legion Post 147 raffle application. May I have a motion to accept the bingo and raffle applications? So moved. Move. Mr. Coletti, Mr. Catamagna. All in favor? Aye. 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 Call the roll. Council President, uh, that concludes oh. my portion of the agenda. Okay. Um, council reports. Uh, start with Councilman Martino. Progress. Good summer. Let's go have a good fall. That's good to hear. Councilman Pettigano. Thank you. Um, the rec has, was very busy over the summer. We had more children in our program than ever before, and it was a, uh, a success. Um, coming up, though, is movies Under the Stars. That would be Friday night, September 25th at 730, Hotel Transylvania. It's a month early, but uh, you know, let's start scaring them now. Uh, also coming up in October, October 17th, it'll be Harvest Day at the Rec Center. Uh, we'll be selling pumpkins and mums, and hopefully we will have a hayride. We'll see how that goes. Um, and also the um, Recreation Department is about, is taking over the after school program from the Board of Ed and the morning care program from the Board of Ed. Uh, this is a big endeavor for our, um, our recreation center. We have a lot of children that are going to be moving in and out from, these, from this building over the next year. Um, I'd like everybody to be careful. Um, especially in the mornings and afternoons around the rec center during school time. Uh, they'll be shuttling children all over town. Um, hopefully this goes very smoothly. So far things have gone well and um, I just want to congratulate Donna Puglis on a good job putting this together. That's all I have. Thank, Thank you. you. Councilman. Councilman Clay. Uh, regarding GIF or Joint Insurance Fund, uh, there were no meetings in uh, the month of August. The next meeting is September 16th, and I will have a full report at that time. <clears throat> and regarding our fire department, they had a mutual aid fire drill uh, the other night, August 18th, and it was, it was very interesting uh, to see how seven towns gathered together uh, to fight a fire, and it was a uh, mock, mock fire. But there was uh, a lot of detail involved, which I'm going to sketch down and have prepared for my uh, next public meeting. Uh, just some questions I have uh, to uh, go over with the chief to make sure I get all my facts right. But uh, there must that, not, that night, there must have been at least $25 million worth of equipment from seven towns all colliding on one fire in a mock drill. Uh, very impressive. And to see, see how it's run. It's run just like a, a military uh, event. Uh, they, they have a command, then they have a super command, I guess four-star general versus the three-star general, and uh, the lower commander takes care of the field, then it's broken down by a, a underground command center where the three people that were there that night were former chiefs from other towns. So you have all that intelligence, all that brain work sitting at that table uh, bringing all the information in from the fire, and they, they have it all plotted out on, the, on a board where the firemen are and uh, the, the communication. And then they did a mock where the firemen were lost, uh, and then they brought some uh, dummies out that were uh, rescued out of the fire. Um, and it was very, very interesting and very informative, uh, which I will elaborate more on uh, next meeting and I'll give it to you if you care to uh, did you get any was anybody there from uh, from the local paper we'll get the, we'll get you some pictures maybe and we can you know, get them over to you all right okay and uh, that's uh, oh by the way that was on Slater Drive we want to thank Mark Cal for access they actually allowed us to go into the uh, building where it was all paper goods 
and uh, they use theatrical smoke and uh, it's eerie to see that smoke coming down from the top and then you're you're in it I, I've never been in a fire so I don't know what it's like but uh, very you know, interesting hopefully never you you are you are never in a fire thank you councilman thank you anything else that's it councilman Ketamanya. thank you mr. president you look good over there no joke. congratulations in uh, a few weeks ago, I went to visit the high school. There's a lot of work going on, and I, a um, lot of improvements. I understand all the windows were changed. They call us a bomb proof, a bullet proof. It's a good idea. And I um, also see a lot of work going on at, uh, at the field. Uh, a lot of noise, as I live across the street, and I see a big job over there, guys. Uh, at the end, it will look really good. And, you know, overall, we we'll improve the town very much, and uh, and I'll be able to watch games. I think they elevate about four feet from my house. I'll be able to watch football games. So I don't have to go and buy a ticket. Thank you. That's all I have for now. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Vancino. Yes, thank you. Um, we spent a lot of time talking about um, a liquor license tonight in our ordinance. So in, in that spirit, I'd like to bring your attention to, to resolution R29115, drive sober or get pulled over. I thought that would be a nice segue, talking, going from the ordinance to the, uh, to the resolution. Uh, but um, impaired driving crashes cost annually $50 billion a year in the United States. And some 20% of motor vehicle crashes uh, fatalities are alcohol related. Uh, recognizing the uh, summer seasons upon us uh, and through Labor Day, there's quite a bit of socializing that goes on and alcohol may be present. Um, I, was at the, um, I was at a concert on Saturday at, at MetLife Stadium and uh, as we were leaving the stadium after the concert, I figured the state could probably fund a new Hudson River tunnel with all the um, uh, all the enforcement they could do on Route 3 pulling out of MetLife Stadium, but that was probably a lost opportunity. But uh, so as part of this, there'll be an increased enforcement and hopefully an increased awareness. We're going to participate in it. And hopefully with that increased awareness, it'll result in more safe roads in our community, in our state, and in our country. Um, also related to our police department, last uh, public meeting I talked about our junior police academy uh, the day after our public meeting I attended the graduation so we had some 22 or so cadets uh, graduate from our first annual uh, junior police academy and it was really something to see uh, every one of them uh, really walked away from that experience um, a little bit changed they got a better understanding of police and law enforcement um, they learned a little bit about um, their abilities and their limitations and how to um, overcome uh, adversity. And they all teamed together or pulled together over the course of the week uh, to make it a, a very rewarding experience. Uh, they had a slideshow which kind of showed the evolution from the, when they first got there and, and started PT sessions to the very end when they were all kind of walking in the straight line and everything like that. So I think based on the success this year, it's going to be a great program that our, our PBA puts on our police department for years to come. I'm hoping that our first class of junior cadets goes and spreads the word at their school. I wouldn't be surprised if they double the attendance uh, next summer. It was a very good program, and I commend our police department for it. On uh, September 21st, the governing body is going to have a joint meeting with our library board. And we're going to take a deep dive into the planning at the library. Uh, you may have seen an article in the paper about Rutherford. They're doing capital improvements of the Rutherford Library. They're spending like $250,000. And you know, we're talking about spending about a million dollars north of that here in Elmwood Park. Now, it may not be an apples and apples comparison, but we really need to understand what the nature of that project is and how spending that 1.2, 1.4 million dollars is going to provide a resource for this town for 10, 15 years to come. And that's the kind of answers I'm going to be looking for at that September 21st meeting. And um, so we'll keep you posted on that. And finally, I finally talked the ambulance court. I've been talking about the car show. 
They finally gave me a prop to hold up, so I have a car show poster. There's a familiar Mustang there on it. But the car show is going to be September 20th, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the Elmwood Park High School, 375 River Drive. And the sure. rain date is October 11th. Got it? Excellent. Okay, that's it. I'm Thank good. you, Councilman. All right. Well, first of all, I'd like to congratulate uh, our uh, committee that put together National Night Out. I think it was a very successful National Night Out. Uh, the firemen actually uh, helped, uh, and we had a bonfire afterwards. It was a very nice, nicely attended. Uh, hopefully, it'll grow from here, and I'd just like to say congratulations to the police department, our ambulance corps, our fire department. And again, when you talk about doing these drills, people have to realize that our volunteer ambulance and our volunteer um, fire department, I'm sure the ambulance corps was involved in that, in yes, that, they were. In yes, that they were. Um, project. These are more than just volunteers. These are very dedicated individuals, and I thank them for that. Uh, I'd also like at this time to congratulate the Elmo Park Little League 12-year-old uh, team for winning their divisional championship. This is the first time in Elmo Park Little League history that we have a team bring home the championship. I, um, I invited the officers of uh, Little League and the players to come here tonight and join us uh, so that we, the council, could recognize the boys and the coaches for their achievement. But due to many of the boys and some coaches being on vacation, we're going to invite them to a future September meeting to honor them. Um, again, it's, uh, this is something that, uh, that, these, that these young boys, um, it's a special time of the year, August. It's Little League World Series. You know, they won their division. They could have been. They could have been that team that's representing the uh, New Jersey. Unfortunately, they didn't get past the division, but uh, winning their division is very big, and I congratulate them. One of the other things that kind of bother me as I drive through neighboring towns is when you drive through and you see these signs congratulating their youth programs uh, for winning, winning championships. You can go to Satterbrook and you can see them uh, congratulate their, uh, their football teams for winning a Super Bowl or their cheerleading teams for, uh, for winning a, a championship. Um, well, our Pee Wee Bombers last year, and we did honor them here, but our Pee Wee Bombers last year won the Meadowlands, uh, uh, Meadowlands Football League Super Bowl. They had to end they had to endure going through, I believe, eight or nine different communities, uh, not playing them more than once, okay? And they won, they went undefeated, I believe. Uh, no, and lost once. Uh, they lost one game, I apologize, but they won the Super Bowl. And one of the things that bothers me that is that we don't, other than bringing them to a council meeting, we really, the, the town doesn't get a chance to enjoy that. So I'm encouraging, and I'm, I'm urging my fellow councilmen here tonight to approve us putting up a sign, uh, a road sign that's going to go right by Barrow Field, that we could put multiple uh, uh, plaques on there. And one, I'd like to recognize the Elmo Park Bombers for winning the Pee Wees for winning the 2014 Super Bowl. I'd like to recognize the Little League 12 year old boys for winning their divisional championship. And I believe the Bomber cheerleaders won their nationals. I'd like to see that on there. And I urge my councilman here that we approve and agree um, to put up these signs because I believe our youth needs to be recognized for that. And it's not just, I mean, as you're driving through town, not only do they get to feel important, like they did something, but now the following year, if the Pee Wees win the 2015 Super Bowl, we will change the 2014 to the 2015. We're not going to just accumulate all these different signs. It will get changed as it gets updated. So I recommend and I encourage my councilman to join me in, uh, in approving this and putting uh, a sign on Borough Field, you know, nice little sign, not, not large, not small, but something that's not intrusive, but recognizable. Um, <clears throat> traffic alert. Ladies and gentlemen, very, very important. Uh, and I wanted to save this for last because, and I'm, hope, and I'm glad that our, our reporter is here because I think there needs to be an article written on this. Beginning September 14th, uh, we will have two major road construction programs starting here in Elmwood Park. The first will be the train tracks located on the boulevard just north of Fire Company Number 4. The roadway will be closed completely from traffic starting Monday, September 14th, and estimated to reopen after September 18th. So Monday through Friday, the road will be completely closed. There will be no vehicle or pedestrian traffic going over those tracks. During that time, the traffic will be diverted to Van Riper Avenue, to South Central, 
to Linden Avenue back to the boulevard. During those days, there will be no street parking allowed to help move the detour traffic. The second project that will also start on September 14th is Market Street. We're finally starting the uh, pump house um, uh, restructuring and uh, the force main will be starting uh, on September 14th. Uh, we will be closing portions of the westbound, westbound lanes of Market Street to replace the sewer force main. This project is estimated to be completed by November 20th. During construction, we will maintain two-way traffic throughout the time. However, in the work zones, there will be no street parking allowed. We anticipate the contract to be, com be completing about 200 feet a day. Businesses will remain open during construction, and the contractor has been informed to in inform the businesses when they will be working in front of their business so that we can minimize the inconvenience. And we please, we ask all residents when traveling in these areas during this time to please use caution and possibly plan an alternate route. Thank you very much. And that's all I have. At this time, we'd like to open up the meeting to public. Is there anybody here in the public that would like to be heard? Karen Brecchia, 156 Lee Street, 285 Market Street. I appreciated the phone call that I received from Mr. Kazmark notifying us on what's going to be going on on Market Street and the Boulevard. However, it gave me the whole day to stew about it and talk to some of the other business owners. Being the West End, we've had all this time for this to start. This is the first two weeks of school. It's the worst time ever. Is there any way we can flip-flop the dates? Start in October, you're saying till November. Push it, you know, that's gonna be such a crazy time. St. Leo's is just opening then. You have this, the fair, the church fair. How do you have no parking on Market Street? You know, I really think some other consideration, just, you know, what, what will be will be. We have to make do. But in the same respect, it's taken so long for this to come about. I think it's very poor timing. The busiest time of the school year and church and my business too. I'm closed all summer. I open up September the 14th. You know, I'm a nine month business. One second. I also want to just say, Mr. Coletti, I'm so upset about the fact of what went on today with this whole liquor license ordeal. It's very hard to be in business. That man is looking to keep his business going. We're looking to turn it away a business again? You want to put that man out of business? It's free enterprise. If a dance studio opens up one door next to me, there's nothing I can do about it. We have 20 beauty parlors in a, in, from one end to the other end of town. Did you ever consider that? Why did you allow that to happen? Why did our borough allow there to be so many beauty parlors, so many nail salons? It's not fair. It's just not fair. And it really makes me feel terrible with the fact of that we want to put a man out of business. He's been in this town as many years as many of us. And at the same respect, we're, we're looking to, to send him, you know, packing. Yeah. Karen wasn't looking to put him out of business, just the location, so close to the other stores. He still has his license, he can go in other areas of Ellen Park. Bob, you're worrying about his location. What about the barbershops, the beauty parlors, the delis, one after the other after the other? Did the, you know, did the building department ever consider stabilizing how many are permitted on our streets? Why is it happening just for him? You know? It's a, it's, it's a law that's been since 1969. But it, he's not changing the law. It's 200 feet he's, in state. He's asking us to change it from 500 feet but it's for him state to go down to, to allow him to right. encroach in that 500 feet radius. <coughs> I know, but I'm not, like I say, I, I respect what you're saying, but in the same respect, I understand as a business owner what's involved. And that's why, like I said today, I thought more and more and spoke to a few of the people at the end of the street. It's really bad timing. That's a bad week. I'd I, I like to address that. First of all, understand that government doesn't just 
turn around and it's not a light switch. We can say, okay, we're going to start on this day, this day. Right. We had to get one, we had to get certain prop, uh, permits to do it. We had to go through a res we had to go through bonding to get, uh, and we had to go through uh, putting out uh, an action to uh, request for bid. Uh, all of that took place. And we've had our DPW uh, super, uh, superintendent tell us that this particular station, this pump station is in desperate need. Mm -hmm. Not, it, this should have been done two yeah, years yeah. ago. Two years okay? ago. Okay? So we are kind of right now buying time with what we, by starting so this project now. We have to do it. But we understand this, though. This project is being started now, and it's going to be done by November. If we were to push it off, then you're going through the winter, right. and then you've got to deal with snow, frozen ground, what, el what, what, what other opportunities. So we really don't have a choice of when. We didn't have a choice of when. It, now's the time. Because if we don't start it now, and we push it off till the spring of next year, what happens to the, re to the 600 residents if that pump station right. goes bad? I understand. We have a response, right? Timing. Through, through the you, timing you, will never be proper, understood. Through you, through you Council President, the, the, the trouble with this project, Karen, too, is that um, there are multiple projects planned along Market Street that are contingent upon one right. another. The Force Main is the first project. Then we have the streetscape which we're ready to break ground for in the spring. The force main needs to be done before we can do the, the streetscape. Then we have the county's plan to um, restructure the intersection of Market Street and Boulevard and ultimately pave Market Street from end to end in, in Elmwood Park. So there's multiple dominoes that are set up, right. for lack of a better right. description, and, and they all have to fall in sequence. Um, and that's why I you know, made the right. call to you and some of the other business owners this morning because I share your concern about the timing of this. Um, school opening up, the fair, different businesses, you know, generating more business after Labor Day because people are back in town and, and the like. Um, I am confident that with this contractor, we're going to get full cooperation. And I wouldn't say that about every contract that okay. we deal with, that's for sure. Yeah, like I said, um, but I, I, walked out, I walked out of the pre-construction meeting yesterday morning um, with a good feeling that they're going to be accommodating, to the extent that they can be, to the business owners. They're obviously not going to create an unsafe condition at the school. Um, the fair is not something that came up, but I will touch base with both Mr. Murphy, our engineer, and the contractor tomorrow to reiterate that that event really can't be interfered with. That, that and we'll, we'll make will, accommodations. It ends on the but, 13th right. right. there. But yeah. the concern, again, and hopefully we won't start <clears throat> until after that's concluded. Um, but the concern is, is that th these dominoes need to fall and we need to concern ourselves, as the council president indicated, with the winter. Because once they shut us down, we can't continue to work. Okay. So um, rest assured, and I've give, I'm gonna, what we're going to do um, is we're going to send out contact information through the contractor, which includes my contact information and that of the contractor. So if any businesses have any concerns, as I shared with you on the phone this morning, I'm going to be the point person on this one to make sure that we mitigate any any trouble that comes up. Okay. Okay. Yeah, like I said, we all know we all know the parking situation. Absolutely. And you know, everybody's and we're, and we're going to do the best we can. And, and the good thing is, is that this is not construction that's going to just be in one area. Right. As as days go by, they're going to be moving from your area down by the pump station down towards and under Route 80. So there's it's it's going to move along. It's only going to be an inconvenience for you for a short period, and then it's going to like inconvenience said, people further down the road. I just thought that you know. I know. Anyway, to put you back it's, a week it's, not, you, it's not ideal. Because you're at the worst time of yeah, it's, it's not ideal, but at the same time, you know, in order for these dominoes to fall the way they need to, in order to, if four projects on one street uh, in sequence is, is a lot to handle, especially when we don't control all those projects. Right. Two of them are county. Okay. So, Thank okay. you. You're Thank welcome. You. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please, is there anybody else that would like to speak? If not, please sit down. Could please come up to the microphone. I have a couple of questions, a couple of issues came up. Exactly today, a couple okay. of issues came up. One, we had roadways in our town again on, on Local Street and Mulberry Street. I heard them talking and they yelling at each other and everything and they were really going out of it, really bad. And I want to tell you the 
reason why they well and well the same is there's no turning lane on that local street. They want they said they should have a turning lane. Technically, Locust Street has a it ends at Mulberry, correct? So right. every lane is a turning lane. You right. either got to go left or right. That's what they but they wanted a turning lane in the road because then we get to see it. Because they, the way the guy says, he's in the middle of the road. Okay. My only suggestion to you, Mr. Arabia, is if you witness that you think there's a problem, please call 911 and talk to the police department to come out and stop it before anything actually happens. We don't want any road, road rage getting out of hand in Elmwood Park. And another thing happened today. I was waiting to come in, coming home today, and I saw all pieces of, pieces of car laying in front of the you know, city hall, all laying on the sidewalk. And I seen that, and I said, must be having an accident. Then I was walking up my street, a local street, and sure enough, I found more pieces of the car on local street. Big accident. Okay. Uh, so, so I just had okay. to tell you, and I pick up all the mess. Well, thank you, thank you for that. <laughs> I did that. Thank you. And another thing is, please, please, clean up the bait, all the garbage underneath the bridges because they are so dirty underneath the bridges. You can't even walk on it. It's all glass and everything on them. You need to be clean. Are you talking underneath Route 80 and Route uh, and Center Street? On Center Street, okay. Yes, both bridges. Our, our DPW does occasionally clean that, but that is state property, and we have asked the state. Now, understand that our DPW has so many men. We have some men that are out on disability, and that actually the one gentleman who does usually clean that is out on disability, uh, and we're dealing with vacations. Uh, so there may be, and we had, last week I believe we had two major water main breaks, um, which require a, a good number of our men. So our, our DPW is kind of spread a little bit thin right now, so I'm asking you to thank you for that information. We will ask them to take a, uh, take a look at that and try to clean it up. We will also require this, uh, request the state if they can help us. But uh, again, thank you, but understand that we, we're kind of limited to our manpower or person power in this day and age. have more questions, more issues that, that, that didn't get taken care of. Okay. My yeah. lights and the street lights all out stay yet. No lights if you stay in the backyard here. It's all dark okay. and no lights at all. There's there's two things you could do for that. One, you could either go on a computer and go on to PSENG.com and report the particular pole light out. But if you're not if you don't have availability to the computer, just uh, you live right here, just stop by our borough clerk's office, give them the numbers that are I off did the pole. That, and she didn't ever call them. Well, I, I wouldn't say she never called them. That's, we don't know that. But, uh, I mean, again, it we're dealing with... It didn't never work. I could, I could tell you I that I... I gave them the numbers of the polls and everything. I gave them to them, and they said they're going to call. And I, I, I'm only going to say this, is that I respect what you're saying, and we will work on that. But understand, I, I will not say that we didn't make the phone call, because I personally made a number of phone calls to public service to get a street light on Market Street fixed. It took 10 emails and finally three phone calls yeah. and it finally got taken care You've of. You've got to admit though, when you brought it to our attention about the tree growing up on top of the roof, we got rid of that real quick. I know. <laughs> I know that. That's funny about that part. There's the one more issue sure. that came up. The cop, the woman cop police woman, mm -hmm. she got in the car it was an old, old police car, number 422. Mm -hmm. I wrote her down the number. Right. I remember the number. And she drives at night time, sometimes at night, mm -hmm. and one headlight out. And, and, and she says, it's hard to drive with the light, light out. And she said, I need to get this fixed because it's, it's hard to drive with the light out. It was, and car, not the new cops, the it was car, car cars. number 422? Right. It's out of service. I'll talk to the chief. The lady needs fixing. I'll talk Thank to you. The chief. I looked at it. Thank all you. Time. Thank, Thank you very much. Is there anybody else in the public that would like to speak?
two issues I want to bring up to the council today. Uh, one is I'm here because of a business event that took place in Rosemont Park on Wednesday, uh, 729 and 15. From what I understand, special permission without a permit from the police chief was given to the business Tiger Shulman's to film a commercial using borough property without the knowledge of the mayor's office, the borough clerk, the recreation department, or permission and knowledge of residents who live within the area. Speak into the mic. It's not coming across. Thank you. I'm sorry. Good? Good. Speak. There was also special permission provided to the production crews dozens of cars to park wherever they wanted, including in the no parking zones that surround Rosemont Park. The police department was called several times about the outright disregard of the production crews members creating dangerous situations by parking too close to the corners and a foot or two from the stop signs as cars were coming and going all day long. During the stay, the production created more dangerous situations by spilling out onto Florence Avenue where they had cameras in the middle of the street and kids walking up and down the street while the production crew was trying to direct the traffic as cars were driving through until the police were called. Uh, and they were advised to move out of the street. The cameras and kids then moved to the sidewalk where they stayed until the police left and again they had kids walking around in the street until the police were called yet again. They had also blocked public they had also blocked public sidewalks on the Florence and Columbia streets, preventing use by local residents to walk dogs. As this event was spilling past the event ending time frame into the 6 and 7 o'clock hours when several local residents and children were trying to use the jungle gym and swings, the production crew was disrespectfully yelling at the children, demanding that the background noise has to be quiet. The production crew posted parking signs on telephone poles and street signs advertising the location of this event, which was taken down at the end of the event. If I posted a sign without a permit advertising a garage sale, I would be summoned by the building department. These people were throwing water, water bottles, cans, candy wrappers, <coughs> toilet papers, lollipop sticks, food, and food wrappers all over the park and the surrounding streets. And at the end of the day, the girl who identified herself as the one in charge did refuse, or did refuse to provide her name and did have one person walk around and poorly picked up about 85% of the garbage that was left on the ground by this event. I very politely asked the girl in charge again to have somebody finish cleaning the mess that the production crew had left, and I walked around with this person, and as I was pointing out the garbage, she wanted to leave and had stopped them and told them they were off the clock, and then she questioned who I was, and when I told her I was a tax-paying homeowner, she told me I needed to get a life of which I respond to have a nice evening. What this production crew manager girl does not understand is that I live across the street from the park and living there, and the use of the park is my life. As an own park homeowner of 20 years, I support our local businesses, and I would have expected this particular local business owner's film crew to have had a little bit more respect and control of its people and more respect for the borough property and residents that support them. <coughs> this business was given permission to use residential borough property, which means they were guests and should have been more respectful of the use of the park and the residents who live within the area. And if that was my business, I would have made sure all of the garbage was picked up, even if it wasn't left by any of my people. There were mostly cars from New York, Pennsylvania, Maryland, and some New Jersey, meaning a lot of it, if not most, of these people weren't even from our town. This, uh, this outbreak disrespect of this production crew to the local residents and their children and the garbage that was left in the park after they were finished is unacceptable. Now, as the governing body of this town, how does the police chief have the right to allow this to happen without a permit being issued from the recreation department as set forth in your laws? Council President, if I may, okay. Mr. Morrison, there was multiple correspondence between you and various officials in this borough on this matter prior to tonight. Many of the questions that you've just rattled off to this governing body have been answered. That's the, the, fact, the fact is, is that the police chief came to me on prior to this event and asked me what our permitting process was for a film production to be conducted anywhere in the borough. And the fact is, is that we do not have a permitting, uh, a, an ordinance which permits someone to f do a film shoot within the borough. So whenever we are approached about someone who wishes to film in town, the one requirement that we have 
is that they must go to the building department because if they are going to use any type of generator equipment that requires an electrical permit, they're required to procure that and secure that from the, from the building department, okay? Mm -hmm. Donna Puglisi, who's the recreation director, was contacted on the morning of the photo shoot and issued the permit. So the fact that you continuously have said, both in email correspondence, phone conversations, and here again tonight, that there was not a permit issued by the recreation department is false. She issued the permit. The entire production was monitored by the Elmwood Park Police Department. And for the majority of the day, either the police chief or the police captain was present. I'm not gonna say for the entire day, but for the majority of the day. Because the chief checked in with me personally multiple times once the complaints, which I believe were all from you, came into the borough. As far as, the, as far as the accusation that the police department and my office were not aware of this, that's absolutely false. I called your office. Now the mayor's office, listen, my entire staff may not have known about it, but I knew about it. And the, as far as the mayor's office goes, the mayor's office nor this council oversee the issuing of permits for a function like this. Now if the council chooses to change that and create a permitting structure in order for a film shoot anywhere in town, to have to apply and receive a permit with council approval, that's up to the governing body. But as of now, our ordinances on that are silent. So I, I take exception to the fact that you have gotten up here again, because you've already communicated with various borough officials on this, and made an accusation that my office or, and or the police department were ignorant to the fact that this activity was happening in that park on that day, because it is not true. In response to that, I had called your office, and your office had no clue of this. I had called Donna Puglisi, and she had no clue of this. I spoke to the mayor. She issued a permit on the day of the shoot. I had spoke to the mayor on the night out that we just had with Donna Puglisi, and she flat out said while we were staying there having a private conversation, she had no knowledge of this. She had no knowledge. She had no knowledge prior the day before the event. She, on that morning, she issued the permit. But they approached myself and the police chief, and they were granted permission to use that park. And the recreation department on the morning of the shoot issued the permit. But to say that we were all ignorant to it is not true. I didn't say you weren't ignorant. Like, you did. At the, at, the, at the beginning of your comments, that's exactly what you said, sir. I said without the knowledge, and that is because I called all of your offices. And you spoke to staff. And did you speak to me? Were you available to speak to? Did you ask for me? Yes. Well, I, listen, I pride myself on returning every phone call I get. I even spoke to the police chief that day. I spoke to the mayor that day. I spoke to Don. And the police chief was well aware of it because the, biz, the local business owner in town approached him first to try to understand what the permitting process was or what type of building inspections would be needed in order for them to be able to commence with their photo shoot. I'm not going to debate it, but I also take exception to the fact that you have indicated that the department heads, who were well aware of this event, didn't know anything about it. That's because after the fact, the department head of the recreation... Mr. Marston, we are not going to continue to argue this point. Is there anything else that you'd like to say, state what about today? What you're today? saying is you have a permit on file in office that I can see. And for the record, the only complaint that came into any department, because I looked into it after the fact, was from this gentleman. Not one other neighbor in that area complained about this photo, about this film shoot. Well, it's like spang I've ever heard a complaint about this. You absolutely do, but I, for the record, no other, no other homeowner in that section of town surrounding that park had an objection to this film shoot. We're, we're, we're not going to argue this point. Is there anything else that you'd like to bring up tonight, sir? Yes. Okay. The second point I have as far as the aftercare is being taken over by the Recreation Department. Apparently that has been approved. That's correct. How do they plan to handle Title II of the American Disabilities Act? It help me with what Title II is. Uh, basically, Special. they have to cater to Special children. disabled children, okay. disabled patrons. I spoke to Donald Puglisi today. She has, she stated that she has nothing in effect to support children with disabled needs. I, I'm going to ask you to do this for me, not because I'm trying to push you off, but we do not have our legal counsel here today. He's actually out on vacation. And be, I, I'm not privy to what exactly Title II is. I'm not sure anybody here on this council is here. 
prepared to answer what Title II is. I would ask you to come back to the next public session when our legal uh, counsel is here, and we can then answer your question. Um, I'm not trying to push you off or skirt you. I'm just telling you that I'm not here to pre I'm not knowledgeable enough to answer the question. You know, we, we can't say that. We are prepared to handle anything within the law that we're supposed to. Now, whether that fi well, no, fits... That's a clue of what I'm talking about. When and, and it's, again, you know, as I say... You're, you're right, we don't. But we, are, we do know that we can handle anything that we're supposed to handle by law. Well, now, is that by law are we supposed to handle this? My response to that is you put a wheelchair accessible ramp outside here. Mm -hmm. Somebody has to be knowledgeable of the American Disabilities right. Act here. Mm -hmm. right. Correct. So based on that, you're telling me you have no clue of this act. I'm not sure if this act it pertains to what you're going to ask me. Because I don't know that, I'm going to ask you to please, I'm not, again, I'm not trying to push you off. I'm asking you to come to the next public session, and we will have our attorney present that he can answer those questions for you. I'm not knowledgeable enough to, to answer the question. I, is anybody else here knowledgeable? <coughs> so, I, I, again, it's not for any other reason that we don't have our, our, our attorney here today. Council President, if I may, too, with regard to the subject matter, um, I know that Mr. Morrison reached out to Donna Puglisi today. Um, Donna indicated to him in her response that she would need to confer with the borough attorney. Obviously, the borough attorney is, is away on vacation, which is why he's not with us tonight. Um, but I can confirm that to the council that there have been multiple conversations between the Board of Education attorney and the municipal attorney with regard to any types of provisions that need to be made by the Recreation Department with regards to special needs students. So those discussions are ongoing. Um, Joe and Donna need to um, get back in touch with each other because those conversations happened as late as last week. Um, and they have conferred as to what the schools are required to do versus what a Recreation Department would be required to do. So we need to seek, we will have further guidance from our legal department on this once Joe comes back from vacation. Okay. Okay. What, one of the requirements of the American Disabilities Act is a public entity shall make reasonable modifications in policies, practices, or procedures when the modifications are necessary to avoid discrimination on the basis of disability unless the public entity can demonstrate that making modifications would fundamentally alter the nature of the service program or activity. And if that's the case, you must provide that in writing. Again, Mr. Morrison, I think we've made it very clear we are not prepared to answer that question because we don't have our legal counsel here. Okay. I'm not stating what you're stating is not correct, but I'm not sure that it pertains to what we're talking about. And until I know that, I am not going to allow anybody on our council to make any comment on that. So I'm going to ask you once again, is there anything else that you'd like to talk about or else we're going to have to move on? No, so come Thank back you. to the next meeting. Please, yes. Okay. Thank you very much. You. Is there anybody else in the public that would like to speak? Hustle, Jim. <laughs> Take them off. It's 5 o'clock somewhere. James D'Amico, 64 Willow Street. Just a reminder, uh, please, folks, um, September 2014. September. September 23rd, please, the senior center, the uh, homeowners. We have a meeting every month. We didn't have it in the summertime. Please come down. It's a great thing. It's just everybody getting together, having coffee and cake, and just talking about whatever. Please, September 23rd at the uh, senior center. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, 7 o'clock, right? 7, 7 o'clock. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else that would like to be heard? If nobody else would like to be heard, um, I would like to have a motion to close the public portion. So moved. So, second. second. Mr. Martino, Mr. Coletti. Whatever. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'd just like to remind you that this meeting was being videotaped and is available on Cablevision Channel 77 on Tuesdays from 12 p.m. Thursdays 4 p.m. and Fridays at 10 a.m. It's also available on Fios Channel 41 at the same exact times. Gentlemen, may I have a motion to close the meeting? So moved. So moved. Marti Mr. Martino yes. and so Mr. Yes. Coletti. All in favor? All in favor. Aye. Thank you very much. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah.